And so we're going to do a little light bleed test right here just to kind of show you guys. Um, we're controlling the darkness here so I can keep the brightness up here with that. And so you can see the light bleed starts to appear as we take the brightness up. But we're down here. If we take it all the way down, we go back up. And it's not terrible. The light bleed issue is not really awful. It does exist a little bit. And if, I don't know if the camera can catch this, but if I shift, you can see it kind of shifting if you look right here between the two. So, you know, if this light bleed thing concerns you guys, um, I just would maybe order from Amazon when this thing goes on Amazon or somewhere where you can have easier returns. Definitely understand that even in the new fixed one, and I picked this up off Ambernick's eBay store, um, is still having a little bit showing through on that. I'm not sure what he said. I don't even know if he knows what he said. No, wait, I'm not Donald Trump. Hey, deadheads, welcome back to the channel. Or welcome for the first time, new deadheads. Today, we're going to do a review of this guy, the RG Cube. Been waiting on this guy. Been playing with this for a little more than a week. And definitely going to give you my thoughts about how it handles um, everything, all the scaling, the one-to-one -one ratio, the screen, and is it going to really be the one to pick up if you only go with one one-to-one -one ratio screen? Anyways, guys, please continue to leave some comments. I love the banter going on in there. We've got a lot of great feedback. Shout out to the guys that are helping each other there with issues. I know that some of you are going back to some of the older videos and leaving comments. I am paying attention. I am trying to help you guys out when I can. Anyways, Let's hop on over and let's get into that review. All right, Deadhead, so here she is, the Ambernick RG Cube. And initially, my first impressions for this upon holding and picking this up was, okay, this feels very familiar. This has become probably one of my favorite form factors, while the Pocket S is now my current favorite overall slab, thin, handheld gaming uh, device this is my next closest this shape this square aspect ratio with these grips like this built in in this square shape and the rg cube feels pretty good uh, in the hands um, the layout here is a little bit i would change things i'm going to talk through this review a few things that i think are done better just a little bit better on this guy over here the unicorn but here's the unicorn and the rg cube side by side so you guys can see very very similar we have the d-pad just a little bit higher up on the unicorn which i think is is more favorable it's a little lower here we do have the two buttons here with this ambernick button we don't have over here we just have our start and select here we have our other D-pad and our X, Y, A, and B buttons. So it's a very comparable looking device um, as far as the hardware goes. I don't want to make this review about Unicorn versus Cube because this is a great handheld with a few caveats or a few things that I sort of just kind of wish had maybe been done just a little bit different. So as far as the hardware goes, you know, Ambernick seems to just be all over the place with whether the buttons are mushy, clicky, soft, hard. This one right here, I'd say this is a lot like their um, 35XX line as far as the buttons go. I wish it was more like the buttons on the 556 or 552, but this is more along the line right there if you can see that. Your sticks, your hall based um, switch style sticks. So if you can hear that. And your D-pad. Again, this is my favorite style D-pad. However, the implementation here is a little bit stiff. It's just a little bit stiff as far as it goes. I'm hoping over time this will wear in. Um, I have never used the RG Arc, but I've been told or I've read that the the one on the arc is better so i don't know why we don't have the same one because this guy's going to play some saturn and the arc isn't even though it doesn't have the six buttons so um just a little stiff here going back to the the unicorn this is just yeah it just feels like you would expect it to do so there's just a little bit of stiffness here but hopefully that'll wear in over time um if you like stacked shoulders 
um, you know, versus inline because that is one of the major differences between these two units. I am going to say for me, the stacked shoulders in this form factor, I don't like them. I would prefer the inline to hold it like this again with that D-pad a little bit higher up. I think just feels for my hands a little more natural. Um, so again, but as far as stacked shoulder buttons go, these are great. They're actually great. They're not too loud. They're a little loud, but not real loud. And no rattle. So there's no rattle on them. So that's pretty nice uh, for that. We So one of the things, again, I'm going to point out several things that I think are more favorable for the unicorn. For me, my opinion, I know other people are going to have different opinions. Um, the placement of the USB port. I've said it before. I'll say it. I'll scream it to the end of the time. If you're going to have a port up here, great, but your charging port should always be right here. Listen, guys. Listen, Ambernick. Listen, Pal Kitty. Listen, everybody. I, Neo. Let's make this a standard right here, deadheads. Let's find a way and make this a standard port. So there's nothing on the bottom here, which is, is not a problem. You just have these two little holes for speaker sound. I think um, you have a headphone jack and then you have your USB-C. Now, where is HDMI? You know, that's another thing. Why don't we put a mini HDMI up here? Now, I know we can do USB-C over video. This is Android. But what if I want to launch Linux on this thing? So, you know, it just would have been nice to do that. There's nothing on the sides here. On this side, I don't like this either. I don't like the placement of this button here. Um, there is, you know, the reset button way over here, if that's what you want to call it. There's not a traditional reset. This is Android, though, uh, and your volume rocker. So, again, for as far as ergonomics go, this thing is pretty nice. I just wish the placement of this was a little bit different, or I find the unicorn to be a little more favorable. The inline shoulders um, would have been preferable to me. The USB charging port down here would have been better. And then I don't... I mean, I guess some people might like the design of this vent, but it's kind of raised. And when you're pull, you're holding back here, it just, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the way it feels. It's just not, I mean, I don't like it. Um, I tossed some PlayStation stickers on here and this colorway. I love this colorway. That's one thing Amber and it has been doing it. They've been killing it on the colorways uh, with this thing. And so that is a hardware perspective. But let's take a look and talk about the gameplay experience with this thing. As we play through some Crash Bandicoot 2 here on the PlayStation 1 using Duck Station, uh, I do have this running with a 1 to 1 uh, aspect ratio. I have it upscaled to 720p. And my god, this thing just looks beautiful. Um, again, this T820, this Tiger Unisoc CPU, is a very strong CPU. It is um, going to outperform the G99 um, to give you, you know, a little bit ability to maybe upscale just a little bit better than the G99, but more importantly, give you the ability to actually have GameCube and PS2 compatibility reach a little bit of a higher level. I don't think that it's that huge of a difference um, between the two. Um, but it is somewhat of a difference as we shift over here and let's see some more PlayStation. And uh, as we look at some Dino Crisis 2 here, um, again, running on Duck Station, this is going to just look fantastic as we look through some FMV here and we get to some gameplay. This does have a beautiful, crisp, vibrant screen. I do have this down sampling at a 4X um, integer, integer here. And so with this one-to-one -one aspect ratio, Again, some people may not like the way that this thing renders, you know, in the screen, but I like sort of this weird look to it. If you're trying to go for this authenticity, you're maybe not going to get the same, you know, 4-3 aspect ratio you would have gotten on the original um, PS1. But when you're considering the fact that 4-3 and, you know, 3-3 or 1-1 are not super par far apart as far as aspect ratio goes, then you can see the picture here and it's easy to to remember or sort of forget how the controls of these older games are it's not your real nice typical modern day 3d as i, I fumble around here to, and with this d-pad being lower it's just 
I don't know, it's just not quite as nice and comfortable, especially with the stiffness of it as something like on the uh, Unicorn or the Wind Chaser that I've shown you guys here. But you can see some nice, beautiful, fluid looking, um, uh, fills the screen here. Again, running this through duct station. You're not gonna get exactly the same sort of crisp looking uh, scalability using RetroArc. I know most of you might just use RetroArc, but I do recommend using the duct station that it comes with if you're gonna play some PlayStation 1 on this thing. Uh, but let's take this up to another level of emulation. We showed a little bit of Mario Kart GameCube on the Unicorn, so let's see how this thing does and performs here on the Cube. And as expected, this looks really beautiful um, on this device. GameCube is a real joy here to play. The CPU here is going to play this even better. I don't know if it's enough of a difference where you could maybe upscale this even one more level. Um, but I do have this running at the just the 1x because of the 1 to 1 ratio on the 720-720 screen without down sampling. But you can see here that it just looks really bright, really gorgeous here and looks just as good as we saw on the Unicorn. And that's one of the things I want to talk about here. You know, this CPU being more strong than the Unicorn, it's pretty obvious. It is a more um, stronger CPU. It's going to be able to do more. But I want you guys to consider this. With this screen ratio, this one to one screen ratio, are you really going to get the most out of that performance, you know, running something versus, you know, spending $10 more, maybe $15 more and getting the 556? So, you know, if you have the ability and you have the money and you have the time to play and enjoy, I am going to say the 556 along with the Unicorn is a better combination than the Unicorn alone or the 556 alone or the, the Cube alone. Um, I don't think that the difference you're getting in the ability to play um, more Switch because I didn't even play Switch on the Unicorn because again, the G99 is not a CPU that really is going to do much with it. Switch is a bonus system mostly. Um, on this one, you're gonna get a little more Switch emulation, but Really, you need to step up to a Pocket S or Odin 2 if you're going to go with Switch emulation to really get that playing right. And so, you know, I think really, again, what are we talking about here? If we're going to go for this CPU, if CPU is important to you, I am going to recommend that the 556 with the OLED screen, the wide aspect ratio, the bigger screen, is just going to probably be a better move for that CPU. If we cannot get the Unicorn out at the right price, though, then I'm going to say the Cube is what you should go for. What I want to say overall, as I wrap up this video, is that this handheld, again, shows that Ambernick is able to continue to not only crazily pump out product after product, but pump out products that have unique characteristics and are really good. We shift over to some talk here. This is one of my favorite platformers. And you can see that it's running very beautiful and smoothly filling the screen. And it doesn't look quite crazy. Um, but again, if we're going to run this, you know, um, GameCube game that was some of these in 16.9, originally, I'm going to just say if it's about the CPU deadheads, I just feel like this from Ambernick with the same CPU is going to just be a better overall experience with the full OLED screen that you get. Now, if somehow we could have gotten a OLED screen on this here um, versus, you know, the one by one aspect ratio, that would have been something of a beauty. But if you guys are basing your choice on the T820, if that's going to determine whether you go with the Unicorn or you go with the, um, the Cube here, I just want you to consider that the CPU in this is the same. 
you're going to get the performance, but you get a bigger screen, you get OLED, and you get a, a screen that's going to scale more appropriately for the types of games that you're going to be playing on using that CPU, uh, including Switch-based emulation or more modern like GameCube or PS2 emulation for it. So just keep that in mind, guys. That's my um, opinion here. This is what I'm saying that I think if the CPU is the most important factor for you, I'm going to go with the 556. It's only 10 to $15 more, but man, you're getting so much more for that for your money if it comes down between the two of these. So let's um, wrap this video up and go over the things I liked about the Cube and the things I didn't like. So let's get it real quickly out of the way. Let's just talk about the five things that I didn't really find to be very favorable in regards to the cube. And the very first one I'm going to mention is the fact that I don't like where the USB-C port is. I know that's very nitpicky and kind of minor to most people, but I'm a guy that likes to dock things. I like to charge things in a certain way. I have a specific charging setup. And the ability to have this right here and just set it in and charge or dock is really crucial or critical for me. Um, it does just make it better. If you're going to have one up here, throw another one down here. Don't any, any reason to do that. Number two, I don't prefer the shoulder buttons on this one. Now, as far as shoulder buttons go, they're good. They work nice. I don't have any qualms with that. I just simply feel like for this form factor, this more square compact form factor, inline is more preferable for that. Number three, the D-pad. While I love this style of D-pad, it's stiff, it's not the best implementation of it, and it's a little bit low on the unit compared to where I would like to see it for that um, overall. Number four, I am, and again, guys, I'm being kind of nitpicky here. I don't like this. I don't like it. You know, the unicorn had a more flat design for the fan. I like that it has a fan. I just wish this wasn't raised. Or if they were going to do the glowing thing and this thing has lights, make that glow too, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and the last thing I don't like is that with the unicorn, it comes shipped with a bag and a protective cover. So you get a built in protective cover that it comes with automatically. You can see that's flat for the cutout. Um, it just has a more ergonomic shape. It just has a D-pad that works a little better and an overall. Now, let's talk about what I love about the Cube. I love the implementation here of the way it's set up with the, the uh, dual screen emulation for 3DS and for your DS. I like the overlays that have been included. Um, I think Ambernick has done a fantastic job there with these overlays. And playing DS on this thing is a joy, man. It's just a real joy to play Nintendo DS on this thing. Now again, it is also a joy to play DS on the Unicorn. And the G99 and the T820 are both going to do DS emulation. One is not going to be significantly better than the other. So if we're looking at DS emulation, I don't think that there's any advantage there to have the, the superior CPU for DS you know, emulation. But as you see here, I just really like the way that this comes set up with these overlays installed so you can just get into Drastic, start playing um, these games and just have it already scaled appropriately, upscaled appropriately, looking great, looking fantastic, just going and playing. And I think that's pretty wonderful. 3DS is equally bringing a nice um, balance between the two screens. Here's replacing Kirby Triple Deluxe. And you can see that it is getting a pretty decent. And this game is a little bit challenging to play on 3DS. I do have this at 3X. I think if I drop it down to 2X, it won't stutter nearly as much. But of course, this 3X looks beautiful. And they do offer the same overlays here. I have disabled those because I've been messing around and trying to get different settings here. Um, but it does look good here, and we'll just drop this down. Uh, but again, this dual screen setup is one of the reasons that I really completely love um, 
love these one by one aspect ratios the cube and the unicorn and again the implementation here uh, is really great as we take this internal resolution down just a little bit we'll go down to 2x and get that frame rate up just a little bit so you can see that's much better there at 2x and it still looks fantastic now I have ran some games in 3x on this and without any problem this Kirby game is so fun um, but again I definitely um, really love the screen on this thing I think it's gorgeous for what it is it is going to scale retro games way better than some of the more modern ones but and it's also going to be just a really good use of screen real estate here for your 3DS and 2DS games. Um, I do think that this price is pretty competitive. We are seeing this coming in at $150 with coupons and perhaps we can get this to come in, you know, at a better price. Um, between the two, the screens are about the same. You're still going to get a much more beautiful screen here with the 556. I think between the two, the 556 um, with its OLED still is a more overall superior screen. Although lately the 1440p Pocket S has been the screen that has been amazing me the most. Come on, let's beat it out. Well, Deadheads, so that is my thoughts about the RG Cube. I think it's a buy. It's a fantastic device. I think if the Pal Kitty RGB 30 and the Unicorn did not exist and we had just the Snow Cake, I would say, man, get this. But in this world, because we have a lot of choice, for me, I'm going to say the Unicorn is a better device overall. Now, is it worth as much money as this one? No. Um, if they're the exact same price uh, between the two, then for me, I'm definitely going to go with the Unicorn still. But I understand that most of my audience is probably going to go with the Cube. Um, but if the Unicorn comes in at even $10 less, I'm going to say go for the Unicorn. Now, the other problem is distribution. This guy is going to be way easier to get a hold of. But again, if you are looking for power, if the CPU is the number one thing that matters for you, I am going to recommend you go with Ambernix 556, which has the same CPU. You're going to get a better screen, a better experience overall, although this thing is bigger. And this thing is a little bit more pocketable but when we're talking about pocketability yeah these kind of stacked shoulders are not going to be great for that uh, pocketability although even the unicorn is not the most pocketability of that these two would you get or would you go for the unicorn uh, are you waiting on the unicorn i'm really hoping that we get some updated news soon to let us know when this will be available overseas right now you can pick it up on aliexpress if you're going to pick it up you're going to pay more but make sure you use a credit card or paypal to protect yourself well guys look forward to some more uh, review stuff coming soon amber nick keeps pumping them out the rg 40 xxh is next and we'll see what's after that anyways deadheads hope you have a great weekend dead fred out